Hey everyone, it's Nitish here and today we are diving into something really exciting and useful. We will be exploring how to use OpenAI's moderation API in a React frontend and Firebase Node backend. So this combination is very powerful in the way you handle content moderation in your web applications. So imagine you are running an online forum or a social networking website. The OpenAI Moderation API can help you automatically filter out harmful content, making your platform safe and welcoming, or perhaps you are developing an educational app. This setup can ensure that the content shared by users is appropriate for all age groups. The possibilities are really endless, and this technology is a game changer for online community management. So it's not just about filtering the inappropriate content, but also about enhancing user experience and maintaining your platform's integrity. So in this video, I will guide you through the entire process about how to integrate the moderation API into your React and Firebase project. So this is not just about coding, it's about creating smarter and safer online environments. So as you can see over here, this is a demo of the project that we will be building in this video. So let me just give you an overview of what we are building. So I'm going to write hello in the input text. Click on submit. The output response is the content is safe to use. Now let me write something else like I will beat you next week. Click on submit. It says the content is inappropriate. So this is the moderation API of OpenAI that we will be using. It says this endpoint is a tool you can use to check whether content complies with OpenAI's usage policies. But in general, the OpenAI's usage policies prevent all kinds of harmful intent to be flagged. So these are the categories under which this API measures or checks the input text if it is harmful or not. So if you want something specific to check, then you can also do that instead of using the general flagged response. And this is how we can use it. We just have to provide the input text and we have to make the request on this URL and then we will get the response in this format. So we just have to check if it is flagged or not. If it is flagged, then the content is harmful in any one of the category and we will also be able to see the scores. So this is Visual Studio Code and in the front end we have React already set up and in the back end we have a Firebase function which is called as moderation.js. So currently the back end function does not do anything. It simply accepts a text to moderate property in the data input and it should return if the text to moderate should be flagged or not. We will have to add the implementation details by using the moderation endpoint. On the front end side, we have a component with the name moderation. It has an input text and a button. So the button is to submit the text and there is on a div at the bottom which will show the output if the content should be moderated or not. And the buttons click event for submitting the input text does not have any implementation. So here we will be calling the backend function and then we will be submitting the text to moderate. So first let's get started with our backend function and then move on to frontend. There is one more thing that you need to think about when using the OpenAI's moderation endpoint and that is the API key. So I have already explained how to set up your account in OpenAI's API dashboard and then generate API keys to use different APIs. I will share the link of the video in the description. So if you want to learn how to do that, then you can go through that video. All right, so for the moderation function, the first thing that we need to do is to install the dependency of Exios because we will be using that to call the moderation API endpoint. So let's do that. So npm install Exios, press enter and over here, I'm just going to fetch the package dependency. So const exios equals to require and then exios. Now in the function body, 
the first thing that I will do is I will simply create a constant for the OpenAI's API key. So API underscore key equals to now I'm just going to paste the key right over here in the source code but the standard way or the best practice is to store the keys either in the environment variables or to use a dedicated key manager. Next we have to create an Axios instance object that we will be using to raise or to call the endpoint API so Axios dot create now over here we can provide an object with some options the first value that I will be providing is the base URL so the base URL is let me show you the base URL is this one which I showed you api.openai.com and then v1 and then we can set the complete endpoint when we are using the Axios instance for the post request so I'm just going to copy it from over here actually I have to copy the entire HTTPS to v1 so let's copy it and let's paste it over here next we need to provide the value for the headers so headers is going to be an object with content type which is going to be application and JSON and then we also have to provide the authorization so authorization property is going to be in the authorization property format which starts with bearer and then we have to provide the openai's api key and that's pretty much everything we need to do for our axios instance next we can call the api by simply uh, creating a constant for the response so const response equals to await axios axios instance dot post now because we already have the base url we don't have to uh, provide the complete url over here so we just have to provide moderations and we have to provide the input so the input is the text to moderate that we will be sending from the front end so input is going to be text to moderate right now we have to check if the text is flagged or not and for that we have to see the structure in which we will be receiving the response so it's going to be um, response dot data dot results dot flagged and also results is an array so first item or first object dot results dot flagged so let's do that so const flagged equals to response dot data dot results first item dot flagged and that's pretty much everything that we need to do so let's save it now get back to our front end code to integrate or call this moderation function so over here we have the input and the button now we have to do a couple of things over here the first thing that we will do is we will create a state variable to indicate if the front end is currently fetching the response or not based on that we can enable or disable the button to prevent the user from clicking on the button again and again while the response is being fetched so for that i'm just going to create a state variable with the name fetching and set fetching is going to be the function to set its value equals to use state and then initially we can set it to false now in the button we can add a disable attribute so it will be disabled if the um, response is being fetched so we can simply write fetching over here and let's also change button text while we are fetching it so if fetching is true then the text can be checking and otherwise the text can be submit and also we can change the visual appearance of the button to indicate that it is disabled and is non-clickable so because this is already a template string i can simply write the, um, the token format and check the fetching condition so if fetching is true 
then use a set of classes otherwise use another set of classes so if we are fetching then let's set the background as gray 600 and also let's write cursor not allowed now you must be thinking what are these classes that i'm using so this project has tailwind already installed and set up so these are the tailwind utility classes that i'm using now i'm just going to um, remove the all the focus and the background classes and paste them over here and yep that's pretty much everything we need to do to handle the enabled and disabled state now let's come to the handle submit function which will be called when the button is going to be clicked now over here we have to first call the backend firebase function and then um, send the text to moderate as an input now the way to call the firebase's backend function is to first import the dependencies which are get functions so with get functions we can get the list of all the functions which are available for us and then https callable so using that we can get the um, reference of the specific function that we want to call so we are going to import it from firebase and then functions now over here i am just going to write const moderation so moderation is our function equals to https callable and then we have to provide the list of the functions which can be fetched by calling get functions and then we have to provide the name of the function which is moderation so the name of the function is over here this one moderation let's add a uh, simple try catch finally block so try catch error and then finally so in try uh, we are just going to create an object for the data that we will be posting so const data equals to an object with the property name text to uh, text to moderate that the backend function is expecting so text to moderate is going to be the input text for our input so this is the input text if you haven't noticed already which is going to be updated every time the input value is changed using this function set input text and the next thing that we need to do is to set fetching to true to indicate that uh, we are now fetching the response from the moderation endpoint now let's get the result by simply calling the moderation function now this is a very easy process to call the callable functions the firebase's function package takes care of all the internal things to make it happen the syntax exposed to us is actually very easy to handle and work with now when we have got the result then we simply have to set the value of this output state variable based on what is there in the result so let's do that set output it's going to be result dot data if result dot data dot flagged is true then we are just going to set the value as the content is inappropriate otherwise we are going to print the content is safe now let's do one more thing okay but before that let's set set fetching to false and finally block so irrespective of if our call is successful or not we are eventually going to set the um, value of this fetching state variable to false to re-enable the button and now let's save it now let's do one more thing and that is to log to the console the entire response and for that we will have to return the response i'm just going to return the response over here so response is going to be response dot data dot results and in our front end code we can simply um, log to the console what the response is so results dot data dot response now it's time to run our code and see if it's working or not so there is an error saying that results is not defined so let's check that out 
Okay, so I think this is the culprit. So I'm just going to rename it to result and let's see if it fixes the error or not. Now let's enter some input text and let's moderate that. So um, hello there, click on submit. It says the content is safe. Now let's try to enter an unsafe content. I will beat you next week. Now it says the content is inappropriate. Now remember that we also logged to the console the response. So let's check what the value of the response logged in the console is for the inappropriate content. So here you can see that the value of flagged is true, which we are using to check if it should be um, flagged or not. Now let's check out the categories. Now for violence, it is true. For other categories, it's false. It simply means that this text is flagged for a violent intent. And it also provides us scores if we want to see which specific areas are emphasized more while checking for moderation. So most of the time, I don't think you need to use the categories or category scores. You can simply check if the flagged is true or not. But if you want to be more specific, then you can go into further details of which categories are flagged and which are not flagged. So that was everything this video has to offer. And I hope this tutorial helps you in your projects and inspires you to explore more. Integrating AI into web development is not just the future, it's the present already and it's exciting to be a part of this journey. And finally, if you found this video helpful, then please consider subscribing to the channel your support means a lot and helps me bring more content like this to you. This is Nitej signing off for now. Happy coding.